Okay, I want to do a video today more about shocks. There's a lot of questions I get about shocks. I'm going to do it about tuning. What we used to do for shock tuning throughout the night. And I want to touch on base valves. I want to describe how they work. Um, because I don't think there's a lot of information and a lot of people understand about base valves. So I'm going to talk a little bit about base valves and how they work and what they do to the shock. So let's roll the intro and we'll talk about shocks today. I've spent the last 30 plus years working on race cars, building race cars, and racing cars. And I'm here to help you better understand racing technology. First, I'll talk about tuning shocks and what we did throughout the night. The basic idea about shocks is it's a timing thing. If your car slows down and the track starts to slick off, the amount of G's you put into the car to get it into the corner reduces. So the car will slow down. So basically what you want to do is... Uh, soften the right side shocks in low speed. This will be standard. We do have some dual speed adjustment now, but this is just basic old school adjusters, compression and rebound. So what we always did is as the track slowed down, you want to get the speed back into the car as it's entering the corner. So we'd soften compression on the right side and we'd reduce rebound on the left side to get the car to roll easier with the reduced entry into the corner, the reduced speed and the reduced G-forces. Things are a little different now because we're gluing down the front end so much with shocks Big rebound, especially on the right front. A little bit more big rebound on the left front than we used to run. We used to open up that left front quite a bit and get that car to roll evenly. But now I'm thinking with all this arrow and everything that's going on, we want to keep that front end down and planted. I don't know if I'd let the left front pop, get up as much as we used to. We used to kind of do um, the left front quite a bit, but now I'd probably reduce that and keep the whole front planted, especially with keeping that right front down. Here's something to think about with the left rear shock. Now, if your car falls in the middle of the corner because you're going to lose that steer in the car, the car will end up getting tighter. The right side tires won't be aligned as much as that car falls, so the car will get tighter. So if you go in and you're fighting a tight condition, sometimes it is better to actually add compression to the left rear. Now, because of spring indexing and how much the shaft is going to go in, and if you have a compression adjustable front on the left rear, however you got to do it, you have to keep that car up on the left rear going into the corner. Because once you lose the steer, if it's tight and you're waiting on it and you roll off the gas and that car starts to fall, it's only going to get tighter. So what you want to do is you want to add compression or do whatever you need to do when the track slows down and the car wants to start falling in the middle of the corner, you may want to add compression to that thing. As far as rebound, that's the same thing. Rebound adds, taking rebound out adds traction just because it'll allow that spring or allow that tire to keep in contact with the track more and it'll keep the stretch in the tire 
So if you can afford to take any rebound out of that left rear, it's only going to add traction. I guess the same thing can be said about the right rear with taking rebound out. We always took a little. You don't want to get too much because of the spring and everything. You don't want to get wheel hop, but maybe a click, depending on your shock adjustment and how they work. A click or two on the right rear rebound we always took out just to add a little bit of traction there. And you want to take compression out because as the track slows down, your car's not going to have as many G-forces to transfer that weight. So if you take right side or right rear compression out, and allow that car to easily fall or fall quicker onto the right rear and transfer that weight. That's probably what you want to do. Real fast tracks where it's muddy or if they go out and like prep the track before the feature, you might want to even add compression if you know you're going to be running a big curb on the top and you get slamming that thing. That car will react so fast, you could run into some real trouble. So keep an eye on that. If you're sliding in your the track goes from slick almost to like a curb situation, adding right side compression will help tame that car down and make it drivable around the top. Whether you're even if you're going to diamond shape the track and slam that right rear, adding compression may be able to make that thing just a little bit more drivable. The right front can get real touchy. A lot of guys lock their cars down with shocks for aero, and I get that big right front rebounds, keep that car tucked up there and most guys don't want to touch it. What I always used to like, if you can get your all your geometries figured out in the front where the G-forces want to keep that car rocked up there, taking a little bit of rebound out of the right front will actually keep the stretch in the tire. But we use shock so much today to cure body attitude problems in the car that taking any rebound on the right front would probably not be a good idea. Compression on the other hand is probably one of our biggest tuners on the right front. We always took compression out. The slower the track, the more compression you want to take out. It depends on your shock manufacturers in that range that you're taking compression out on the right front. We always ran Integra stuff. And I never recommended anybody running a compression setting over three on Integra because of the hysteresis in it. So if you're starting at like three on an Integra, you could take two or even the last click out and get down to one to get that compression over there as the track slows. Next, let's talk a little bit about base valves. Base valves, I think people like to talk about them, but they really don't know what they're for. Basically, in a nitro-charged shock, the nitrogen between in the floating piston area will keep a positive pressure on the get on the oil inside the shock if you have a certain amount of compression on the shock as that shock goes up it will actually try to like boil technically the fluid under the shock and that boiling will pull bubbles into that shock and will aerate the fluid. Well, you put nitrogen on the opposite side of the floating piston to keep that pre keep pressure in there. So when that compression goes up in that shock, it does not pull bubbles in the rebound side of the shock. It starts to aerate that fluid. What a 
ACE valve does is basically it's an insulator between the floating piston and the piston compression valving. And when that shock takes a shot upwards real fast, the pressure goes against that base valve and actually keeps that oil in suspension temporarily until it bleeds through into the nitrogen area and where you the nitrogen will take over so basically your base valve should be matched to what your compression valving is in the shock so it all smoothly flows together if you go on i believe it was the penske web page for penske shocks they always used to have a really good paper written about pressure balancing shocks. Read that through if you get a chance. It's pretty interesting. But that's what you want to do. You kind of want to pressure valve these shocks all the way through between the base valve, the compression on your shock, on your piston in your shock, and the nitrogen pressure you supply. Sometimes, if you run a really stiff base valve, and your compression valving in your shock is pretty stiff, you can actually reduce the amount of nitrogen going in there. Because nitrogen, if you put pressure on nitrogen, it will always add pressure on the shaft through the seals and everything else. So anytime you can reduce gas pressure, it will make that shock work better. Sometimes adjusting that base valve will actually allow you to run less gas pressure and still get the compression um, protection against the cavitation that will go on there. I think that's what the advantage of the Bilstein stuff does. As the track slows down, if you can at all adjust that base valve with their high speed adjustment and keep that gas pressure down and take a high speed adjustment out you'll get that shock to work way better in the slick so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go draw a diagram of the internals of a shock i'm going to show the base valve and kind of show how this whole base valve thing works a little bit more with a diagram. So let's go over to the drawing board and we'll look at a base valve and shock diagram. Okay, this is your typical monotube remote reservoir setup that we run now on the late models. I don't, I don't think modifieds run this, but when you put a base valve in a modified, it would be up here and you eliminate all this but basically this is the system this is your shock shaft the compression valving the rebound valving when you go into compression the oil runs up to your remote reservoir this is your base valve that i always talk about and this is your floating piston in here this side has shock oil this side has nitrogen when you put a nitrogen charge in here, it puts all this shock oil under compression. And just like a radiator works, the more compression, the more pressure you put that radiator under, it can raise the boiling point some. So you want to keep compression on this oil to raise the boiling point. Now the base valve, now see when the shock goes into compression, it goes in here, this nitrogen pressure will keep cavitation out from under the shock piston. But what you can do is if you want to lower the nitrogen pressure in here and actually get the shock shaft and everything to move a lot smoother and it will create traction. What you do is you start working with your base valve. As this 
piston goes up and compresses, it'll start to fan the, the, the plates here and create a compression, your compression um, stiffness to your shock. But when this thing goes up and there's not enough nitrogen pressure in here, it'll actually pull bubbles or cavitation in below the piston. So what you want to do is you need to keep enough nitrogen pressure in there to keep the cavitation down. But if you put a stiffer base valve in here, as this thing goes and compresses, this base valve basically has a shim stack similar to your, your piston. So what will happen is this puts an instantaneous pressure on here and keeps this from cavitating down here. If you have an adjustable base valve, I believe this is what's going on in the new Bilsteins. They have what they call a two-stage adjuster. It's a high-speed adjustment, but it's an adjustable base valve. So what you can do is, is as this shaft goes up and you soften your compression setting, you can also soften your base valve here, which will actually give it less tension and soften that high speed. So you can drop nitrogen pressure. The base valve puts that instantaneous give. It's really all about controlling the cavitation and allowing that shock to pressure balance in all three areas, whether it's below, above, or in the nitrogen area, you want that kind of be pressure balance for good traction. Like I said, go to the Penske website. They used to have an excellent article about pressure balancing. If you want to learn more about shocks, that's what I would go and read. Okay, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. The notifications aren't anything spammy or anything like that. What it is, is when you log into YouTube and you want to watch some videos, it'll just say that I have another video up. So ring the bell, subscribe to the channel, have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video.